Hi there, just want to show you the new isometric drawing feature in Designer 1.7. So we've previously been able to draw isometric uh, shapes, etc. But uh, in 1.7 we're able to use a new isometric panel and be able to use that panel to transform shapes and fit them directly onto the current plane, whether that's the top, the front or the side plane. I'll just show you this now. Before we do this, I just wanted to quickly show you what a typical isometric drawing looks like. And we have this street scene here, and all of the buildings are, are viewed from a kind of elevated angle and off to the right hand side. So you see this particular building here. Um, we have a, different faces on the buildings which are exposed uh, to the viewer. So you can compare that to a, a completely flat illustration where you're looking at the design from the very front. So let's kick off and start our new isometric grid. And I'll do a file new. And I'll just pick some basic settings here. And I can create my first grid. So from the view menu, I'll choose studio and then choose isometric. And this new panel that's available in 1.7 allows you to first of all switch on an isometric grid, replacing any existing grid. So I'll just click Modify. And you'll see we have our Grid and Axis Manager displayed here. And you notice the grid type is set to isometric. Now the first thing to do is to clearly switch on the grid. So you can do that by just checking Show Grid. And what I like to do is to just boost up the contrast here a little bit, just so you can see the grid lines and the subdivision lines. But we'll change this in a little bit, but at least you can see the grid there. With any isometric grid, you can change the spacing. So instead of 64 pixels, I could choose, say, 32. And I can change the number of divisions within there, say, 8. And I'll just zoom in just to show you the isometric grid there. I'll just boost that up so you can see the difference between the, the main grid lines and the subdivisions between them. I can change that to say down to four. And you can see that quite clearly. Okay, well I'm going to change this back to having a division of 1 and spacing of 10.4 for my design. That takes care of the basic grid setup. So now I just want to focus on, first of all, this particular thing. I've pasted a, a background and a building design from that original isometric drawing just to focus on and try to recreate some of the basic aspects of it. So let's just zoom into the object, so to view, zoom to selection. And move it away so we can kind of like try and simulate how we created this with the isometric panel. I think that should be fine just there. Secondly, I want to enable snapping to the isometric grid so objects will fit perfectly onto the grid lines. And to do this, we can just enable snapping. I'll just move this isometric panel out of the way. And I can enable snapping from the top toolbar. And then click this down arrow. And then, importantly, check Snap to Grid. OK, so let's just explain this isometric panel in detail. So the panel is split into three different sections. There's the current plane the Plane Editing Options section and the Grid Settings section. So the current plane section is all about being able to jump between the different planes of the isometric grid, the front, the side and the top. Incidentally, you can use the apostrophe on your keyboard to just toggle between the planes as a shortcut. So this will speed up your workflow when drawing isometrically. So the Plane Editing Options the edit in plane, we'll just show you this in action. So if I enable edit, edit in plane, I pick a rectangle tool, and if I just drag that from here, 
just move to about there. You can see it's snapping perfectly into the grid lines, but most importantly, it's actually drawing onto the top, that blue coloration there. It's drawing directly onto the top, even though I was drawing a rectangle, it's transforming it onto plane. I'll just give that a dark blue colour. And now I want to draw onto the front plane, so I'll just enable front. And you can see this vertical line which helps me just draw that additional front plane object. And we'll give that a light blue coloration. Jump to the side plane and that allows me to easily draw just in here this side plane object. And I'll just give that lilac colour. So I'm blocking out the colours here that I can apply a gradient to later. So in summary, if you keep this edit and plane option enabled, you'll be transforming automatically shapes onto the isometric, currently active plane. I'll just disable ed edits plane now and I'll just have a look at fit to plane. So this means that if I'm drawing an object, it won't actually automatically fit onto the isometric plane because edit and plane is not enabled, but I can selectively choose to just send that 2D object, or in fact text, as well by enabling fit to plane and that's fitting it to the currently active plane. If I undo that and then instead choose a side plane, enable that and then some fit to plane it will fit to the side and you'll be able to position it accordingly. Again snapping being active. The other option here flipping and flipping vertical, rotate and rotate clockwise, clearly I can uh, draw say a different type of shape here so uh, I could draw that pie tool and make it fit to plane so that's fit into that side plane and I can flip horizontal vertical and I can rotate it around in different directions all still in plane Grid settings allows me to, if I want to, just change the spacing of the grid at a later time. But this may affect your des design, so it's best to concentrate on setting your spacing first. But you'll also be able to fine tune the uh, grid coloration and the uh, grid opacity of both the grid and the subdivision. Okay, so this is an approximation of the uh, original piece here. So you can spend more time just fine tuning things with the snapping enabled and getting the gradient fills right for that particular look. But that gives you an idea about how isometric drawing is possible in Designer 1.7.